recording? You recording? Alright. Hello, and welcome back to the Wizard Staff. I'm your host, Guy. And I'm Blake. <laughs> and welcome back to the second episode. Woo! We did it, guys. Man. We're not just a one-hit wonder. Blake, you got anything to say? Oh, yeah, we're not a one-hit wonder. <laughs> yeah. So today's episode, we're going to be focusing on the new set release of the Core Set 2019. Mm -hmm. And if you're if you're like us, you're probably thinking, "What the fuck is a Core Set?" Because <laughs> to be honest, if you've only been playing Magic for the last three, not even three, like if you've been playing for the last year or two, you probably don't know what that means. And so the core sets are things that have come out traditionally once a year in the past. And it's kind of like this new cards. They're help, they kind of help with the, the tournament, balancing out some of the more meta decks out there. And they feature some like popular reprints. But within the last three years, they discontinued it. So this is the first core set in the last three years. And it's pretty exciting because we got some really cool new cards in this set. Right, Blake? Oh, yeah. I'm excited to talk about them. And these are our very biased oh, yeah. opinions. So just keep that in mind when we critique these cards. We are not analytical at all. <laughs> no, we're not. Yeah, we're definitely not getting into the nitty gritty about like, oh, you know, this card will synergize so well and create like redonkulous combos we're, we're more just like man i love this art <laughs> and you know this might be cool i don't know how it might actually work i i'm not that smart so mm. yeah so pretty much the core set is it, it doesn't play into the main story of the magic realm it's kind of like this so for a course set 2019 i believe it's more of a like a prequel to kind of the past because it touches a lot on the elder dragons mm -hmm. which were like the the og dragons and you know commander edh elder dragon highlander is named after these dragons so it's kind of exciting you know yeah it feels like it's finally come full circle yeah, yeah. I mean, if you look at the old artworks, <laughs> man, are they just fucking awful. What are you talking about? They're great. Look how beautiful and they also, are. <laughs> no, Blake, shut, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> um, but, yeah, not only is, does, is the art pretty bad, but, like, you know, their effects are pretty bad, too, if we're being honest. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, each each of the original dragons, and a little backstory that I also just learned was that uh, EDH, like, originally you could only pick one of these five dragons to be your commander, and then I think they expanded it to any legendary creature yep. past, the, past the dragons. Yeah. Yeah, because uh, other than Nicol Bolas... Which, even then, he's, like, okay. But, like, yeah, I don't think any of these are that great. Uh, yeah, I feel like the old, like, like, Evictus Asmati one was okay, but it's not nearly as good. Mm-hmm. So, okay, I think we're gonna go over first, well, first... Blake, what did, what did you drink right before this podcast? Oh, I'm glad you asked. So I pretty much, like, took three shots of Bacardi Gold. Uh, so I'm on a good level right now. Feel pretty great. And, Guy, what did you drink? Well, Blake, it's funny that you ask. I might include the video in the podcast, but <sighs> I just shotgunned a can of wine. So I have, uh, it's called, god damn it, it's spilling all, it spilled all over my pants when I first, like, cut a hole in it, and it got on my cat, too, 
so I don't know. My cat might be drunk later, so. But so it is called Simpler Wines. It's an Australian brand. I got it at Trader Joe's. It's called Too Uncanny, and it's a Chardonnay. It was pretty good. Uh, so I I've recently got into shotgunning stuff and just poked a hole at the bottom, uh, opened it up, and pounded it like it was nobody else's business, because it's not. You... I'm proud of you. Fucks. I'm so proud. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Alright, so... Okay, first we're gonna hit on... So for Corset 2019, first, let's hit on those reprints, you know? Oh, yeah. The, the cards that... Uh, we're kind of high in price in the recent past, but now, you know, they just got reprinted, and so now their price has dropped a little. And so we got three big ones, and what are they, Blake? All right, so we got Crucible of Worlds and Scape Shift and Omniscience, and I love all three of these reprints. I am very, very happy. They were all pretty expensive, and it made me sad that I couldn't buy any of them. And now I feel like I can actually maybe afford them because like almost each of these have like halved in price of like what they originally were, and I'm really happy now. Yeah, I I'm kind of with Blake where I am pretty happy with two of these three reprints actually. Uh, the one that I'm not so keen on was Omniscience. Wait, what? I I didn't think. Like that's not that yeah I didn't I'm I don't know I I I didn't think there's a high need for it I guess like especially in any other format other than EDH this card is not worth it. Well, yeah, but I just didn't want to pay twenty dollars for it anymore. Now I can get it for like nine, and I'm highly happy. Oh. Okay, I mean. Price drop is pretty great always. Um, I think yeah, it was reprinted with the Egyptian set, mm-hmm. and Amonkhet. It was repr- it, it yeah Amonkhet, and then once before that, and so now this is its third reprint. So yeah, I guess nine dollars for this card, and this and EDH I guess is the only format where you can play this. You, you would really be able to play this, because, like, when are you going to get 10 mana at a good time for, like, Modern or Legacy? I don't know. But Crucible of Worlds and Scape Shift, those, like, synergize really well together, so it'll be pretty awesome for them to get some play. Oh, my God, the wine's hitting me. <laughs> You're good. Yeah. So, anything you want to say about these indirectly, Blake, or... Uh, all I want to say is I like, have a friend in my playgroup who bought both of both Crucible of Worlds and Scape Shift before they were reprinted, and I feel really sorry for him. Yeah, it, it kind of <laughs> sucks, because, you know, you buy a card because you're like, man, do I feel good, it's a, it, it's a nice card, it's expensive... And then they go and do something like this. This is, I mean, I feel like I might hit on this on every episode. But, yeah, Yu-Gi-Oh! is notorious for this. <laughs> where you buy a $30 card, and then by the end of the year, it's only worth $0.04. Because they hate you, and they like to watch you cry. <laughs> Alright, moving on. Do you want to talk about, like... Some of the new commanders, more specifically, guy. So we got ten new commanders. Blake tried to trick me because <laughs> he said there was only nine. I forgot one. Okay, I'm sorry. I found. So we got so back to our elder dragons. We got all five new elder dragons. So we got Arcadis. We got Chromium. We got Palladia. We got Vectus Amadi. And we got the one and only Nicol Bolas. And then we got some monocolors that who really cares about. Uh, there's this bear, Goreclaw, Laughless, the Dragon Queen, Lena, Sai, 
and Izareth. And to be honest, I don't care about any of them except the dragons. Oh my god. <laughs> what do you got to say, Blake? I mean, I love I love all the dragons, but I mean, some of them are cool that aren't dragons. <laughs> Can you name one of them? I I mean No, that you no. can't. That's right. <laughs> That's what I thought. So, I think first we want to kind of hit on the the three cards of these potential new commanders. That, yes, you could make a deck in them, but you got to consider, like, how they would do as commanders. But we think, like, Laughless, Goreclaw, Psy, those would probably be better in your 99. Not the... Not as sole commanders. No. Yeah. I mean, that's not to like, discourage Gore you Claw. guys, but yeah. They're better in the 99. Oh, yeah. And, I mean... Goreclaw... Goreclaw is one that I'm definitely going to throw in my to-be Jolta deck. Psy, Master... Thopterus? Uh, Th Is that how you pronounce it? Thop yeah, Thopterus. Th mm -hmm. I don't know. I mean, you, you have to pay two mana and then sacrifice two artifacts just to draw a card. There's so many better commanders that can just draw you cards like that. So. Yeah, I'd almost put this know. in like Jora, Weatherlight Captain, the new one that just came out. Like, it's better right. with her. And then, kind of like, same with the Laughless. It's just a worse Udvara Hellkite. So yeah. it would be cool in, like, a mono-red dragon deck, or, like, any dragon-red deck. <laughs> but, yeah. Um, we got some fresh, hot garbage <laughs> that we would consider to be commanders. Mm -hmm. And that's Lena, Selfless Champion. Palladia, Moors, the Ruiner, and Isareth, the Awakener. Why do, why do you like them, like, guys? Why don't I like them? <laughs> well, let me just say, I love Palladia, Moors, the Ruiner. Like, his art is awesome. I think that might actually be my favorite art oh. of the dragons, the new ones. But, like... Palladia Moore, like, to read off the text, Palladia Moore's, the Ruiner has Hexproof if it hasn't dealt damage yet. Well, if it's my commander, I definitely want it to do damage, so why why wouldn't I want to, like, ruin the Hexproof part and hit him? Because then, you know, he, he hits, he doesn't have Hexproof anymore, and then he's vulnerable, someone kills him, and then I just have to recast them. It's dumb. Oh my god. Yeah, you'd have to pay 8 mana then next time around. That's not fun. Yeah. And it's not like you'd have to cast him and hit him four times to get commander damage. In. I don't yeah. know. He, he seems terrible. Lena, selfless champion. Um... Less, you what? Sacrifice Lena. So, in order to get the best effect, I don't know. You have to get rid of her. Is you have to sacrifice her. Yeah, and she's already a pretty high mana cost. So, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, she's a six cost for a three three. It's like, man, those stats are not good for what it cost. Yeah, and. You only get one white soldier token every time you cast her. It's not great. Mm. Isareth, the one that Blake forgot about. <laughs> First off, the art's ugly. Her mana cost is fine, I guess. I think my main issue is that she doesn't cheat out the creature. It's like you literally pay the exact same cost for the creature that you want 
you're not cheating it out in any way like a reanimator deck and it yeah I just don't like it as much yeah I mean I guess it's cool that you can just pay X it doesn't you can pay like colorless mana mm -hmm. to get the creature out but it's not like you know that's a huge obstacle Especially if it's like a mono black deck, then like that's not that hard to create a couple colorless mana. I don't know. Anyway, I'm tired of talking about all this shit. So let's talk about some cool commanders, Blake. Yeah, let's talk about some good stuff. Okay. Yeah. So first up, we got Arcades, the strategist, who is a one green, white, blue. Legendary creature, Elder Dragon. He has Flying Vigilance. Whenever a creature with Defender enters the battlefield under your control, draw a card. Already good. Each creature you control with Defender assigns combat damage equal to its toughness rather than its power and can attack as though it didn't have Defender. Ah, uh, walls finally aren't shit anymore. I'm so happy. Ah. Uh. <laughs> Yeah, so if you don't know what a defender is, that's normally a wall card, and those normally have like really high uh, toughness and zero power. So I almost said attack and defense like from Yu-Gi-Oh, but yeah, they're they're normally not like the best unless if you're playing some kind of like pillow fort deck, but this guy. This guy turns it around. And he's a pretty good mana cost, too, a CMC. Oh, yeah. I like it. You can cast him over and over again relatively easily. Yeah, the only time I've seen, like, wall decks actually be used is what you were saying, like, Pillow Fort or, like, a Phoenix deck, where, like, because they have such high toughness, you tap them and, like, mill for, like, a couple cards. And that's the only time I've ever seen wall cards be used. And, like, so I'm really excited about this card to actually see see them be used, like, in a proactive way. Yeah, and I like how he's, in the art, he's also, like, kind of behind a wall. Mm -hmm. And it, I, I believe if you go back and you look at, the, like, the original uh, Arcadis, he, it's something to do with, like, plus zero, plus one until end of turn, your untapped creatures gain plus zero, plus two... Um, so it, it definitely kind of pays homage to the original where it's more about the toughness than it is the power, mm -hmm. you know? Oh yeah. So that's pretty cool. All right, moving on. We have so next, Chromium, the mutable, four colorless, white, blue, black for a legendary creature, Elder Dragon, seven, seven with flash. This spell can't be countered. Flying. Discard a card. Until end of turn, Chromium the Mutable becomes a human with base power and toughness 1-1. One, one. Loses all abilities and gains Hexproof. It can't be blocked this turn. Wow. I like this card. <laughs> this guy's got a lot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, it's a 7-7, seven, seven, I... so it's like 3 swings and commander damage. Well, I think... In my opinion, I would run this as a Voltron deck, and I would just beef him up as a human with a bunch of artifacts, and, you know, it, that'll get him up to, like, some high number, and then I can hit whoever I want. You'll be able to do commander damage a little quicker. Mm -hmm. I think the only problem to that strategy, though, is I'd be taking out one opponent at a time. So I mean, that's the inherent flaw with Voltron. Right. So unless if you could one-shot someone with your Voltron, then it's kind of okay. Okay, let me ask... I do love this art. Yeah. Let me ask you a question though. Like the it costs uh, seven CMC to cast for your first time. Like 
do you feel like that's worth it because it's like an uncounterable spell and you can discard a card to like make it hexproof? Like, do you feel like the protection it gives itself is worth the cost of it? Yeah, I I'd, I'd say so. To be honest, it because you can do that at instant speed. So, really, if he is in trouble, you can quickly like, um, just get around if someone's trying to remove him. Mm-hmm. So, I I mean, of all the dragons, he's the most, he's the one that I'm most excited excited about. (laughs) Yeah. But, yeah. Still pretty good. Mm -hmm. Would you ever buy this card? Alright. Oh, at the price it is right now, because if... To be honest, if of all the dragons, this is probably the one that I would buy. But I would want the foil version, and I think the foil version is just a little too pricey at the moment. So I'll consider it. I might see if it like drops down in price soon. But we'll see. Okay. Fair enough. Alright, do you want to read the next one? Alright, next yeah. card. Absolutely. Vactus. 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 Something. See, this is also, this is also the problem with being kind of, um, what's the word? Like, newbies to the game. Is you don't know how to pronounce like some of the most I... notable cards in Magic. It's fine. Anyway. He's a three, black, red, green. So the, you got two of the best colors in there, and then you got the worst color. <laughs> red being the worst color. Ouch. But flying... W- actually, wait. All of them have flying, yeah, right? Yeah, they're dragons. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I just wanted to double check. Dragons can fly? Yeah, I oh mean, God. most dragons do have flying, but... Yeah, I mean, I didn't know, because, like, the others had a ton of stuff. Like, Chromium has Flying and Vigilance, I think. No, he has Flying and Flash. Oh, Arcadis has Flying and Vigilance. So, I, I, I just gotta go back and check. Okay. Anyway, so he has Flying. Whenever Vectus Amazidi, the Dire, attacks, for each player, choose target permanent that player controls. Those players sacrifice those permanents. Each player who sacrificed a permanent this way reveals the top card of his or her library and puts it onto the battlefield if it's a permanent card. So, I feel like this is a double-edged sword. I love it. Yeah. Okay, what do you mean? Like, what do you what do you think is a double-edged sword about it? Well, okay. I mean, this is, like, the extreme instance, but let's say, like, you attack, and you get everyone to get rid of, like, their best card on the right. field. But what if they had a better permanent? Like, what if someone discarded, I don't know, let's say someone discarded Crucible of Worlds, because, you know, that's reprinted in the set. But then they drew into Gaia's Cradle, and then they could put that onto the battlefield. I feel like you took a step up rather than step down. But that's the fun of the game. That's like chaos. I love it. You never know what's going to happen. Like the entire game can completely swing in another person's favor. And you're choosing the best like stuff of theirs to get rid of and you're choosing the worst of your stuff. And like I don't know. I'm excited about it. I like a little bit of chaos the more and more I play Commander. I like this card a lot. It's probably one of my favorite cards of the set. I okay. I mean, I understand if you're up for that kind of stuff, if you're a little kinky into the chaos. <laughs> but I don't know. I mean, yeah, it's good because it's kind of like um what's the one blue card, expropriate, where you could then like take you could almost like take players best stuff cuz you get the choice, but and this one allows you to like 
destroy other people's stuff because you have the choice it's not like they choose mm -hmm. it's you choose but i don't know i feel i feel like this could it is chaos and it could either work in your favor or it could not and it's kind of a i don't know i like a little more stability in my life blake <laughs> is that too much to ask yes it is shut <laughs> up all right we should move on all right ooh we got the one and only nickel Bolas. i like how you say one and only when he's been re like reprinted in like a bunch of different versions like 700 times it was like 700 nickel boluses hey blake hey yeah. blake shut up <laughs> If we're going to have a catchphrase for this show, it's going to be that. I don't want it to be. <laughs> it won't be. We'll, we'll come up with something better. Okay. All right. Do you want to read Nicol yeah. Bolas? Because he's also a flip card. Yeah, so really quickly, Nicol Bolas... Because traditionally, he's also been a planeswalker. Oh, yeah. I'll, re I'll read that one, too. So, Nicol Bolas the Ravager, one colorless blue, black, red... For a 4-4 legendary creature, Elder Dragon, flying. When Nicol Bolas the Ravager enters the battlefield, each opponent discards a card. So, that's pretty decent on its own. And then, four colorless. Blue, black, red, exile Nicol Bolas the Ravager, then return him to the battlefield, transformed under its owner's control. Activate this ability only any time you could cast a sorcery. And then he, like, flips over into a planeswalker called Nicol Bolas the Arisen, and he starts off with 7 loyalty, so that's pretty good. And then it's plus 2 for draw 2 cards, minus 3, Nicol Bolas the, uh, the Arisen deals 10 damage to target creature or planeswalker, minus 4, target, put target creature or planeswalker card from a graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. And finally, the ultimate, negative 12, Exile all but the bottom card of target player's library. Whew, that's a lot. That's a mouthful. So, what do you think, guy? Oh yeah. Well, I do agree that you know it is pretty nice that each opponent discards a card when he enters the battlefield. I think the one thing I'd like to note is that the original, whenever the original attacks they discard their hand and I think it would have been a little better if that was kind of the effect was whenever Nicol Bolas the Ravager attacks each opponent discards a card but this costs because he's not as high of a CMC yeah but that's what I was gonna say he's literally four CMC that would be really ridiculous yeah but you cast them and then someone gets rid of him and then you got to do it again just to discard a card. And then you, I think the four, blue, black, red, that is a lot to transform him. And, but since he does come into the battlefield with seven loyalty counters, I guess that kind of makes up for it. Because then he's only what for three turns from his ultimate which is pretty much killing a an opponent what do you think what do you think uh i like the fact that it's like a low cmc so if he gets killed a bunch of times you can just put him out over and over again and that that doesn't affect his activated ability of flipping into a planeswalker but i feel like in commander planeswalkers are just really struggle and uh, I don't know, like, I feel like even if you do flip him, he's, like, gonna die the same turn that you flip him. Like, obviously that's not always gonna be the case, but, like, it just seems very fragile, and I feel like Nicol Bolas is gonna die, <laughs> and he's not gonna stay around very long. I, I think this would definitely be a better one-on-one -on -one commander than it would be, like, a four- or five-player group commander. Oh, of course. Yeah. And I, I mean, I guess that's the case for almost every commander, is that their abilities just get heightened to new levels, but yeah, I, I feel like he would, 
be better as if I if you just build them and you solely used them as the French style, which is one on one. I agree. All right, yeah. All right, so now that we've hit all the new commanders and we just talked about a new planeswalker, let's talk about the ten other planeswalkers. <laughs> That were just introduced. Yeah. We're not actually going to talk about and, all ten of them because that would take way too long. And you know why else we're not going to talk about all ten why? of them? Because most of them suck. <laughs> Ouch. I, I'm serious. Like, well, I agree with you, but I think of, I of of my list, I think I only listed three of them as good, and that's good, not even like really good. So, like, garbage is just, don't even consider using this. Eh, is kind of like, it's situational. Good is like, yeah, it's good for this kind of deck. And then, I don't know, there's no excellent, which would mean, like, it would be good with any of these colors because it's so generic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So let's let's only really so we got like the five originals, pretty much, and they all got new planeswalkers. Mm. Let's let's talk about let's first talk about Tezzeret, the artificer master. Okay, I'll talk about him. So he costs three colorless, a blue and a blue, for five loyalty. Uh, his plus one, create a 1-1 one, one colorless thopter artifact creature token with flying. Zero, draw a card. If you control three or more artifacts, draw two cards instead. And the ultimate is minus nine. You get an emblem with, at the beginning of your end step, search your library for a permanent card. Put it onto the battlefield, then shuffle your library. Oh, I love this ultimate. And for yeah, and for those of you who don't know what an emblem can really do, but an emblem is basically like something you'll never get you rid of. You can't get rid of it. If you get an emblem, oh my God. yeah, you're pretty you're pretty much set for the rest of the yeah. game. Like there's all and an emblem like that. Oh my God. Yeah, like emblems in general, like like there's like in the entire game of Magic, there's always like some card that counteracts some other card. There is no way to get rid of an emblem. Like, none, except you kill the player and the emblem is gone. Like... Oh right. Like, emblems are the... Because they, they technically go to the command zone and there's no way to, like, touch them that way. Yeah. And... So, yeah, I think this is... I think this is pretty good. Yeah, I didn't like it at first, except for the, the ultimate. The plus one... I, uh, I mean, yeah, the ultimate's pretty good, because, I mean, it would take four turns, but you also, if you plus one them each time, you have some kind of blocker to kind of, like, ward off any danger. Yeah. So. And then, I mean, maybe you can draw a card each turn, which is never a bad thing yeah. I agree with you like my initial reaction was like oh this card's not actually that good except for the ultimate but kind of what you just said where it can any planeswalker that can create its own blockers to protect itself is actually good so like my initial reaction of this card was wrong and this is actually a pretty good planeswalker I like it yeah mm -hmm. so the next one is Sarkon Fireblood which is a 1 and 2 red red for a legendary planeswalker you may for plus 1 you may discard a card if you do draw a card pretty good for red plus 1 add 2 mana and any combination of colors spend this mana only to cast dragon spells pretty good and minus seven, create four five five red dragon creature tokens with flying. Mm -hmm. And 
that's pretty good too. Like four red, five five dragons. Yeah, I'll take it. In my experience, I've like. What are your thoughts? Yeah, Blake? so in my experience, a lot of people have kind of not been liking this card, and I personally don't agree with them because, like, the plus the first plus one where you discard a card uh, and draw a card, it's like there are slightly better red spells that do that, but not very many, and red needs all the card advantage it can get. And then the other one where it's, like, add two mana of any combination, like, to cast dragon spells, well, you're only going to be running this in Dragon Tribal anyway. And, like, the two, like, if you play this turn three, and then next turn you play a land, and then you activate this, you can pretty much be on, like, you can then cast, a dra like, a six CMC dragon the next turn, and I think that's fucking amazing. And then that dragon can then block for this... Sarkon Fireblood if it really needs to if you really want to keep Sarkon Fireblood on the field and then like it's not likely that I'll get to the ultimate it, at that point you'd be able to cast Utvara Hellkite wouldn't you uh is Utvara Hellkite 6 CMC maybe yeah like I just I don't know I think that people have been liking this to like what's it called like Tybalt like it's the same converted mana cost for a planeswalker but Tybalt is like way worse and like this in a dragon deck i feel like isn't actually that bad it's like an early game play because a lot of what dragon decks dragon tribal struggle with are early game plays like you have to wait till like turn six to like start casting your dragons and then who knows what could happen by then so i actually really like this card and i don't think it deserves all the hate it's getting in my opinion I, I so I do take that back. Utvarak Hellkite is an eight CMC, but you could then cast like Scourge of Valkus, which is a good dragon to get out. Because then if you're just gonna be running dragons, then you know he's gonna really deal some damage. You got Hellkite Tyrant. You got Ryusu the Falling Star. Yeah, you got a lot of good dragons. If you get him, if you get Sarkon Fireblood out, turn three, mm -hmm. and you can play another land, like yeah, you're pretty, you're pretty set, to be honest. Yeah. All right, let's talk about the other Sarkon. Scourge though. the Throne. Yeah. Ooh, I like that one. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. It, it, what is it? So. Sarkon, Dragon Soul. You want to yep. read it? Uh, four colorless, red, red. Starts at five loyalty. Plus two is uh, Sarkon, Dragon Soul. Deals one damage to each opponent and each creature your opponent controls. Meh. Minus three, Sarkon, Dragon Soul. Deals four damage to target player or planeswalker. Okay. Minus nine, the ultimate. Search your library for any number of dragon creature cards. Put them onto the battlefield, then shuffle your library. Yeah. What do you think, I? I think the only, the only thing that, because traditionally I feel like it's when you got a planeswalker, whatever their CMC is ends up being their loyalty counters and for this one it's one less which is fine um and i do like how like the plus two like if you were up against like the edgar markov dragon deck you could do this and pretty much kill all of the the vampire tokens you could pretty much kill any like token with this which is pretty cool because it's every player every creature on the field gets minus one so you get rid of a lot of those smaller creatures and that way he's protected a little i feel like you'd only ever use though his plus two and his minus nine if you do get that chance yeah and so i have one thing to say about this card and i can't help comparing it to sarkon unbroken and it's like mm -hmm. like Sarkon unbroken is like also a planeswalker Sarkon 
that has a much more like strict CMC, and it takes uh, four turns to get to the like the ultimate is the exact same is the exact same on Sarkon Unbroken as it is with this card, and like like Sarkon Dragon Soul gets there on turn three instead of turn four, and like an entire turn in Commander, in my opinion, is like like that just makes this card so much more viable and the fact that like casting it is so much easier it's like i like almost would never want to run unbroken over dragon soul and that's all i really have to say about this card so you're saying you prefer dragon soul over unbroken oh yeah oh yeah yeah i i definitely agree with you there i don't i think after these two Sarkons, I think after my green Jalta deck, we're going red mono dragons. <sighs> You're gonna return to dragons? It'll be a homecoming, to say the least. Yeah, I got you a dragon deck, and you'll be like finishing on a dragon deck. I actually feel like that's very comforting. That's very. I don't know. Nostalgic. Alright. Let's move on from Blink. And then. Games, though. We'll see what multicolored deck I want to build next. Hmm. That's what I'm excited. Is like you've only ever built monocolored decks, you fuck. Like you need to start like mixing it up, literally. Shut up. <laughs> you need to cover your own weaknesses. <laughs> <laughs> I do. But it's nice because in each of my monocolored decks I have like the staples. Yeah. So then I can just kind of swap them out. I don't need to spend a ton of money on a lot of those other cards. Anyway, let's move on to blue yeah. because, you know, we, we were like, yeah, we can do this in an hour. It's not going to be a problem. We're now at 41, 42 <laughs> minutes. And yeah, so hurry the hell up. <laughs> we haven't even touched on the monocolors. All right, go, guy. God fucking damn it. Go, guy, go. All right, so let's hit on the blue. Well, uh, to be honest, like some of these cards that we want to just highlight in the monos, like I'm, I'm not too big a fan of like Wind Reader. Sphinx. Okay, I want to talk about this card. Fuck Flying you. whenever. Okay. It... Okay. okay, so I'll please please take so the I'll... floor because I have nothing. So I'll to read say. it really quick. So Wind Reader Sphinx is five colorless blue blue for a Sphinx that has flying and says whenever a creature with flying attacks you may draw a card and it's a 3-7 by the way so I like this card because it's whenever it attacks not combat damage which makes the trigger even easier and like this doesn't even have to be your creatures it could be guy with his like army of dragons attacking a completely different player oh I guess I'm gonna draw like six cards because you attract because you attack with six dragons ha 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 fuck you and I, like, want to find, like, it does cost a lot. It's, like, 7 CMC, but honestly, I love this card, and, like, I'm probably going to get it. I think it's, I want to find a way to abuse it. Actually, okay, now that you pointed this out, I, d I don't think, I don't, and see, this is me being a noob again, but I didn't read the fact that it's whenever a creature attack. It's not whenever your creature or this creature attacks. It's whenever a creature attacks. It's like Consecrated Sphinx when it's whenever an opponent draws a card, you may draw two cards. This card, okay, this card's a lot better than I thought exactly. it was. Exactly. So, sorry, Blake. Mm -hmm. All right, let's, let's move on. Like, you read the next card. The next card. Oh, I I feel like you should read this card, Psychic Corrosion. It's this is the one card that you're like most excited okay. for. I'll let you. Okay, have yeah, this. okay. I, I am excited about this card. I'm gonna read it. So for two colorless and a blue, you get an enchantment that says whenever you draw a card, each opponent puts the top two cards of their library into their graveyard. I am so excited. This is like literally everything my Una deck wants to do. This is going in that deck right away. Like, you're drawing cards and milling each, not just one opponent, like, double that amount. So it's like, okay, like, I'll just draw a bunch of cards, which is what the deck was designed to do anyways, and then mill... This is literally everything the deck wants to do, and I'm so happy, and it only costs 3 CMC, and... Ugh, like, 
this just makes me believe that EDH mill can be viable. It gives me hope, and I'm so happy. Oh. I definitely also bought a copy for my Jace deck <laughs> because it's on the theme of mill as well. <laughs> So I'm really glad that you pointed this out because otherwise I probably would have never heard about this. Okay, card. I feel like I feel and like at <laughs> a three CMC, this is really. I feel good. like that happens a lot where it's like, oh, guy, check out this cool ass card. Like, remember Dark Steel Mutation, and then guy is like, oh damn, Blake showed me a really cool card. I'm gonna buy it now. <laughs> and <laughs> yeah, because I don't want it to then suddenly sneak up on price. And then I'm like, fuck, I gotta pay $50 for Dark Steel Mutation? <laughs> so, you know. Yeah. I'm anyway. happy. Alright, next blue card. Supreme Phantom. And it's a one blue, flying. Other spirits you control get plus one, plus one. Blake, why the fuck did you pick this to be a card that we uh, I don't know, like, because Spirit Tribal needs all the help it can get, man. Like, I remember playing against, like, a Spirit tribal deck and it was like the okugachi dragon though like we talked about this where like you don't like it it has like it's the giant dragon head and it has all the snakes and like you're like this card sucks and like that was the commander and like it was just like the only way to make spirits viable was to like like put in a, a crap ton of like really good enchantments and then like that was it that was like spirits are junk and it's like i don't know this kind of helps it makes them stronger. It's an early game play. I feel bad for spirits. And yeah, we should move on. <laughs> We're going to move on because I have nothing else to say about it. <laughs> Patient Rebuilding. It's a three blue blue enchantment. At the beginning of your upkeep, target opponent puts the top three cards of their library into their graveyards. Then you draw a card for each land card put into that graveyard this way. Alright, I mean this is another blue mill card. I feel like this is... I like this a lot, too. I don't. You I do don't? not. Alright, well I guess this is the end of the wizard <laughs> staff. Blake and I have come to a disagreement. <laughs> Goodbye. Bye, peace. <laughs> no, I don't like it because like... Why don't okay, you like so this card? like first off, it's like five CMC instead of three, and then it's at the beginning of your upkeep, so like you don't even get the value out of it right away. Whereas with psychic corrosion, you can get it the value out of it right away. And then this is only milling one opponent, not all of them, only one for three, and it's like it's way, way, way too slow. Like, ah, uh, like, okay, it. Like, I'm just giving it... Okay, I can't help comparing... Because we just talked about it. I can't help comparing it to Psychic Corrosion, which is just so much better. And it's like, okay, like, maybe this can be a, like, consistency card. No, this is just too slow. I'm sorry, guy. I, I'm i never going to put this in my mill deck. Like, you can. By all means, go ahead so I can kill you faster. But, like, <laughs> I'm not putting it in. Blake, I'm a little drunk right now, so... I honestly read this card and I wasn't really even <laughs> sure what I was God reading because I also kind of was like oh, okay so I, I draw a card and then each opponent puts the top three cards and so I thought like it was all my opponents but it's only one so I do agree and I was a little turned off by the three blue blue so it's too high okay this card's okay I don't think I will actually run this card but it's okay i it is a little slow for our format but you know everyone makes mistakes i spoke a little too soon all right all right the next card we're going to talk about is nexus of fate it is five colorless blue blue an instant that says take an extra turn after this one if nexus the fucking best effect you could <sighs> have if Nexus of Fate would be put into a graveyard from anywhere, reveal Nexus of Fate and shuffle it into its owner's library instead. Holy crap. <sighs> I want this card so fucking bad now. Buy the freaking buy a box promo. <laughs> uh, maybe. Because I also learned that, like, the other one, the Fire Song Sun Speaker, like, that was only, like, $20 after like a while this one's a lot better though so it may be pretty high price but 
I don't know. I might buy a... I, I think I might buy a box. I don't know if I have to buy a box from my local game store or whatever, but... Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I think this card is kind of crazy. Just the fact that it's at instant speed and, like, it's it says take an extra turn. It doesn't say target player. It just means you. Like, so there's no way for anyone to, like, redirect it so that they take an extra turn. And then it shuffles itself into your library so you can theoretically draw into it again, which I guess maybe is better because you can't, like, Snapcaster Mage it or something. Or, like, I don't know. But it just seems really powerful and really good and holy crap. Ugh. And I think the best part of this, and I didn't even realize this until I watched the Command Zone, <coughs> but take an extra turn after this one. So you could go around to two other people, let them take a turn to those two people, and then right before someone else is about to take their turn, you could play this card to take a turn in between yep. people. And I And I don't think there's any card like this that kind of lets you do that uh, I don't know of anyone yeah so there's no card that will allow you to take a turn in between people so card I mean this is I definitely want this for my Jace deck but yeah mm -hmm. grab this one cause it's probably gonna be a fucking ton of money <laughs> soon <laughs> oh. Why don't you read the next card, guy? Alright. One with the machine. Three blue sorcery. Draw cards equals to the highest converted mana cost among artifacts you control. Hmm. I feel like in most artifact decks, you want like low mana artifacts though right because then you're probably only going to get like two or three cards out of this which I mean two or three cards is pretty good but this card this card is like borderline okay and good I think yeah like this card like I've gone against like a pure like colorless artifact deck and like I mean this card's great if you like you cast her for four and draw four cards, it's, like, even with, like, how much mana you spend versus how much cards you get. And so, like, optimally, you're paying four mana to draw, like, 11 cards, or 12 cards off, I can't remember, off of Blightsteel Colossus or something. But, like, and so that's pretty good, don't get me wrong, but it's, like, most of the time, you're only gonna have, like, a, like, your highest artifact might be, like, a five or a six, like, optimistically. So, like, you're drawing six, but, like, it's basically a, like, I don't know. I feel like it would have been way more powerful if they said draw cards equal to the number of artifacts you controlled, but obviously they're not going to print that. Yeah, because then you could just have a bunch of zero cost artifacts and, you know, you could just have a f like 30 artifacts on the board and then play this card, draw 30 cards, and then you have pretty much anything you need to win. Yep. So, it's okay. I agree with you. We should move on and talk about white, like... I feel like this section is going to very much... I feel like you're going to have a lot to say about this guy. You should talk about the next card, too. Alright, Cleansing Nova. And, honestly, I didn't even, like, know about this card until I read your notes, Blake. <laughs> but, Cleansing Nova, it's a three... White, white. See, this is also why, like, we're so bad, is because... Like, we're so... Like, even though we're supposed to be doing a set review... We're only like picking out some of the cards that we like, and there might there may be even more cards that are actually good for us. So I don't know. Cleansing Nova. Three white white. Sorcery, choose one. Destroy all creatures, destroy all artifacts and enchantments. If you remember from my last video, my Avacene deck, which is a mono white deck would love this because it would destroy it's either a board wipe for creatures or it's a board wipe for artifacts and enchantments and you know what i like most about the game what? like is watching other people <sighs> suffer and i think if i were to have this card you would suffer the most and i will 100 percent be buying this card putting it in my deck and i can't wait to watch you die God damn it 
Yeah, I'm not excited about you using... I'm not excited about you having basically another austere command to just wipe away all of my enchantments. I, I'm i not excited about this at all. Uh, it pains me. Uh, that sucks. Boo. For you. Oh, fuck yourself. <laughs> What's the next card? All right, like? so... The next card is... We're only going to talk about this really quick. So it's called Isolate. It costs one white for an instant that says Exile Target Permanent with Converted Mana Cost 1. The only reason I want to run this card is to exile a Soul Ring. Oh my god, every deck runs Soul Ring, and many of you may have this problem too. Every deck runs Soul Ring, and I just want to exile it, get rid of it, and I don't care, I, I will put this in one of my decks that has white, and I will keep it in there until I can exile a soul ring, and then I will take it out. I don't care if I lose that game, I will be so happy, I will be over the moon. Yeah. Someone doesn't like soul ring. It's no, I love like... soul ring. I just like hate the fact that it's like the best, like arguably the best card in the game, and every deck has it. So it's basically you pay, you just have to figure out ninety nine cards in your deck instead of one hundred. But that's a much different topic, and we're not going to get into that. And we need to move on. <laughs> Don't worry about the time. It's okay, Blake. Our viewers can suck it up and listen for the next forty five minutes about our uneducated opinions about stupid <laughs> shit. It's also, I just don't have anything else to talk about that card. I just want to play to Exile Soul Ring. That's all I want in life. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. All right, Resplendent Angel. It's a one white-white creature angel with flying. At the beginning of each end step, if you gain five or more life this turn, create a 4-4 four, four white angel creature token with flying and vigilance. Then you got three white, white, white. Until end of turn, Resplendent Angel gain gets plus two, plus two, and gains lifelink. So, as we know, I like my angel deck. And this card, I'm, like, debating. It's a little pricey right now for what it is, in my opinion. It has a good CMC of three. And its effect is pretty good. And especially if you have Avacene out, then it's indestructible as well. But my deck isn't about life gain, so I don't think that this is, like, a must-have for my deck. But the fact that I could pay 6 and it gets 5, and I would be able to then pretty much be able to hit someone and get its effect would be cool. But I don't think this is... Hey, it wasn't like uh, the one card. What is it? It wasn't like. Oh my god, what's it called? It wasn't like Lyra's Dawnbringer. Oh, not which at all. Had so much synergy and gave to my deck. This card, I don't think, compares not at to all. it. Like, I will be surprised if you put this in Avacyn, to be honest. I just. Like, it's a nice early game play, but, like. Your li exactly what you said. Your deck isn't centered around life gain. It's not going to like fully utilize this card. It's yeah. Yeah. I I this card the angels in this in this video were like okay. Yeah. Anyway, Sun Cleanser. One white human cleric. When Sun Cleanser enters the battlefield, choose one. Remove all counters from target creature. It can't have counters put on it for as long as Sun Cleanser remains on the battlefield. And, or, not and, or target opponent loses all counters. That player can't get counters for as long as Sun Cleanser remains on the battlefield. Yeah. So, like rereading this card, it's not as good as I thought because... It has to be target opponent loses all counters. You can't make yourself lose all the counters. And I'm specifically thinking about... Because I was thinking, oh, I'll just put Sun Cleanser in my, like, Sigarda deck and just, like, like get rid of all the counters Scytherix has, like, put on me. Because, you know, guy loves to hate me. 
I love to watch people <laughs> suffer. It's not just That's you. your catchphrase. God, you're such a drama queen. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Uh, this next card, though. Oh, my. What a wonderful time. <laughs> So Sarah's guardian is oh, Sarah's I was guardian. Gonna do it. You've been talking for too long. Yeah, I I was just reading oh, the title. Okay, Go Sarah's ahead. guardian is four colorless, white white, for an angel five five with flying and vigilance, and it says other creatures you control have vigilance. Guy. <laughs> yes. Just yes. This is, we'll we'll get into this at the very end, but spoiler alert, this is one of our most excited cards. Yeah. I mean, you're more excited about this. This card's than I am. too good. <laughs> oh yeah, I have every reason to be. I'm not excited about to have. I'm not excited to face Avacyn, where all your creatures are indestructible from her. Have lifelink from Lyra and have vigilance from Guardian. I'm not excited about that. <laughs> but what are the chances that's going to happen? <sighs> Knowing my luck, it's going to happen. It's... Uh... Yeah. It's a good card. I love it, too. It'll be funny when it does. Yeah. Alright, the next card is Liliana's Contract. Three colorless, black, black, so now we're in yep, black. We're talking about black. Uh, it's an enchantment that says when Liliana's contract enters the battlefield, you draw four cards and you lose four life. At the beginning of your upkeep, if you control four or more demons with different names, you win the game. So, like, either... There's, like, really two effects here. If either of them was... If only one of them was on the card, this card would suck. But the fact that two of them, the both of them are on the card, it makes it viable. And the reason I, like, wanted to talk about this card was because I have a friend who has a demon deck. It's a demon tribal. And I always feel bad with him because he would, like, always lose because, like, like, spirit tribal, demon tribal just isn't that strong in my meta group anyway. And it's nice to know that they can potentially actually win. <laughs> yeah, it's... <laughs> It's good to kind of give the, the what would you call them, uh, the peasants, something. <laughs> Savage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I I don't know. I think this 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 card would probably be good in like the Shadowborn Apostles deck where, you know, you sacrifice those to get demons out, and then you just get four demons real quick, and then, boom, you win. So, yeah, maybe. Pretty cool, and I also like the flavor that it kind of goes with with Liliana, and how she made a pact with four demons, and then now she's trying to kill all the demons. Oh, you know way more lore than I do. <laughs> yeah, I don't know much, but I do know that's like a big plot point. Anyway, let's move on to the next card, Infernal Reckoning, and it's just black. Instant. Exile target colorless creature. You gain life equal to this card. So I read this card as fuck your Eldrazi. <laughs> you gain life equal to its power. Because the Eldrazi are notorious for high colorless creatures, which has so much abilities. And oh, they're so fucking yeah. annoying. Oh my god, I fucking hate them. Because, oh like, god. honestly, this is, like, really targeted towards El towards Eldrazi, because not only is it referenced in the picture, but, like, the only... Okay, if you actually look and go online and, like, go to, like, gather a website and, like, type in artifact creatures, there aren't really that many scary ones. Like, you can exile their Blightsteel Colossus, which I think is the best use of this card for an artifact creature, because Blightsteel Colossus is indestructible. Uh, or, say, like, a Worm Coil Engine, because then they don't get the die trigger and create... Uh, two, three, three worm tokens. Or you could just like hate out a Psalm Symbiolacrum and be like, fuck you, no, you're not getting a draw. Or you're not getting, yeah, you're not getting a draw off the die trigger. 
this is really, yeah, this is really like just to hate out Eldrazi, and I think that's kind of funny. And I am really tempted to put this in like one of my decks because someone in my playgroup runs a colorless Eldrazi deck, and it's really strong. And it, uh, yeah, that's all I'll say about that. I want to just exile their Kozilek and be like, "Fuck you!" I only used one minute to do it. <laughs> Yeah, that would be probably even better than doing isolate on Soul Ring. Honestly, I would get more. I would get even more satisfaction from that. <laughs> okay. See, it's fun to watch other people suffer, Blake. <laughs> don't try and convert me. Don't. No. <laughs> What's the next All right, card? The next card is Fraying Omnipotence. Three colorless black blacks for a sorcery that says each player loses half their life then discards half the cards in their hand, then sacrifices half the creatures they control. Round up each time. And this is okay. Like, it's a weaker board wipe. I think it's okay. I I agree. Like, for board wipe's sake, you got so many better options. Yeah. I'm not running this anytime soon. I just enjoyed the fact that each of the colors got kind of a nickel bolus flavor card. So like I just like how it kind of Yeah, this one Yeah, I just like how it kind of punishes those who like overextend in certain categories like it punishes the life gain decks. It punishes the like draw like the like mono blue draw card decks it punishes the like token creature decks it just kind of punishes those in particular and i think that's that but that's highly situational and i don't i would much run i would much rather run different board wipes over this one yeah but you also have to think like if you're just playing against a bunch of people you might not know this card might be better cuz you know it hits on a broader spectrum of what a good card should do like instead of just board wiping all creatures this kind of hits on each of those key themes in a deck like the the life gain the the draw the creatures so this card is very versatile i'd say but you could probably still find a few better of the board yeah. wipes not a terrible card not a great card all right, why don't we move into red and have you talk about your, like, least favorite color? <laughs> I think it's the least col- least favorite color of all of them, of everyone, to be honest. but I want everyone funny. in the comments to hate on Guy. If you love red, do it now. <laughs> Blake, we only have, like, 15 <laughs> views, so I don't know. Maybe one or two people might comment eventually like why do you hate red so much and i'll be like well fuck you red doesn't do Do it anyways and i will love you forever shut up (laughs) it's like the fifth time i've said that now all right read the damn read the damn anyway alpine (laughs) alp alpine moon it's a red enchantment as Alpine Moon enters the battlefield, choose a non-basic land card name. Lands your opponent control with the chosen name lose all land type abilities and they gain add one mana of any color. Not bad. Because then, let's say you're red and you're going up three green decks and they're each running Gaia's Cradle for some reason. You could play this card and you can like get rid of Gaia's Cradle. Which is like the best green card, green land card ever. Maybe the best land ever. I don't know. But this card would like totally ruin them. Otherwise, I feel like it's going to be kind of hard to pick one land out of each player's deck that's pretty common. Like maybe Reliquary the Tower. One I thought of. Or. Yeah, like my- myriad landscape. Yeah. So 
I don't know those general lands like the, but then it gives you them the ability to choose one mana of any color and I feel like that's if it was like one colorless mana okay that's better but this makes it too versatile where those lands still become pretty useful yeah, I was thinking like, oh, I can use this on someone's strip mine because there are quite a few decks that have strip mine as an answer towards strong lands. And then I realized, well, half the time they're probably just going to sack strip mine in response to me casting Alpine Moon, and then it just fizzles and does nothing. And well, no, actually, it wouldn't fizzle because it's not enchanting the land. It Oh, it actually would work, I think. I take everything back. I was wrong. See, we don't know anything. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. I don't know. Not as good as Blood Moon, but still not... It's a good card. It's not a great yeah. card. What's the next card, Blake? We got red All and right, green. So... Yep, Two yep, we're colors. getting there. So, the next card is Sarkon's Unsealing. Three colorless and a red for an enchantment that says whenever you cast a creature spell with power 4, 5, or 6, Sarkon's Unsealing deals 4 damage to any target. Whenever you cast a creature spell with power 7 or greater, Sarkon's Unsealing deals 4 damage to each opponent and each, what does it say? each creature and planeswalker they control. So, I don't know. You really would have to build your deck around creatures that are 4, 5, 6, or 7. And that's pretty limited, like, especially if it's mono-red. You could, like, try and splash other colors in your commander. But, like, I don't know. Like, the fact that the, see, the, the main problem I have is the fact that the creature's power is always equal to or greater than the damage that's actually being dealt. I mean, there's the whole second f clause that says to each opponent and each creature so it can be multiplied. But it's like, uh, I just feel like it's too situational. And I'd much rather play a card that, like, where Ancients tread, where it's like, whenever you... That's also an, an enchantment that costs 5 CMC, and whenever a creature with power 5 or greater comes into play under your control, you may have this card deal 5 damage to target creature or player. I would much rather run that card. It's like... Like, that card is so much better. It's like, why would I be running this card? It's not nearly the same or as good. I mean, I definitely see this has a place in my future... Mono red dragon deck. But other than that, I agree. Like, very situational. I don't think this is anything, again, too special. Yeah. It's a situational card. It's not every mono red yeah. deck needs this. Alright, next card is Goblin Trash Master. Two red red. Creature Goblin Warrior. Other goblins you control get plus one plus one. Sacrifice Goblin. Destroy target artifact. I feel like this card hits on almost everything red really does best is goblins. Other goblins you control get plus one plus one. So that's already a plus one. And then you can sacrifice a goblin to destroy target artifact. And that's what red does best is just artifact hate. So... I don't know. I mean, I think this is kind of like a potential staple to Red Goblin. Yeah, decks. I also feel like this is probably the best red card out of this set. And yeah, whenever you can sacrifice a creature at instant speed and any number of times, I feel like that's a pretty good effect. Especially destroying a target artifact. Yeah. Def yeah, because, you know, that's what Red does best. Oh, all right. That I mean, goblins are pretty overrated in my opinion. But you let's move it. on to the next card. All right. So the next card is Apex of Power. 
I'm not afraid to express I know, my but opinions. I'm just like s- savage. Okay. <laughs> anyway, a- a- everyone can put their hate comment, a- hate in the comments at us. Um, Apex of Power is seven colorless, red, red, red for sorcery that says, exile the top seven cards of your library. Until end of turn, you may cast non-land cards exiled this way. If this spell was cast from your hand, then then add ten mana of any one color. I feel like this can only be oh, good, if not okay, in mono red. Yeah, nothing else really screams run this card to me. Uh, I mean, it gives you variety, I guess. But the fact that you aren't able to then play the land cards that you potentially got rid of is kind of a huge downfall. Yeah. It almost seems like a like you're basically paying ten mana to go seven cards deep, and like that's like theoretically you're casting all of them. It just feels like a very bad storm card to me. Yeah, this is more the not good to okay side of things. Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. Now we're moving Woo! on to our last Made color. It. Here comes the money. Here we go. Money talk. Oh yeah. Well, we got our last color, and then we got a few cards in the multicolor section and slash colorless section. But we'll get to oh, those yeah. in a moment. Cause we got the best color oh of this set, to be honest. Like green, really, <laughs> really like brought it home. Like, oh my god. Like, here comes the money on all of this, to be honest. Okay. Alright, I'm gonna start with this first green card, Colossal Majesty. At the beginning of... Sorry, Colossal Majesty. Two colorless green enchantment. At the beginning of each of your upkeep, if you control a creature with power of four or greater, draw a card. Now this card's great because it's at the beginning of each of your upkeeps. If you kept the same creature for a same turn with power 4 or greater, you get to draw an extra card. So, I don't know. I feel like this is... and I know you like made a comparison to Elemental Bond where whenever a creature with power 3 or greater enters the battlefield under your control, it draws a card. But Colossal Majesty also has that effect of each turn if that creature's still there. And Elemental Bottom doesn't quite that have that, so I, I would say like it's of equal value, if not just as good. Uh, I'd have to like strongly disagree with you. <laughs> Alright, well shut okay, up. Okay, no, just hear me out, because like Colossal Majesty, it's only one draw and it's only during your turn versus elemental bond where it like you could draw you could play multiple creatures on your turn and draw multiple cards and then say you have like seedborn muse out where like you're untapping all your permanents on your opponent's turn and you're like able to cast like spells through like another effect and like you're drawing during your opponent's turns too it's like Colossal Majesty is limited to your turn, and it's only once. Whereas Elemental Bond, it can theoretically like be anyone's turn, and it can be multiple times. And it's the same; it's the exact same like mana cost, and it's an enchantment. And <sighs> yeah, just not as agree to disagree. I think both of these cards are definitely something that. You should run if you do plan to kind of go the route that I plan to go with Jahalta, where you just want big, green, beefy creatures. These cards, both of these cards are great. All right, I will, because Jahalta's coming. 2018, you'll see it soon. Get ready. All right. 
Now, I really want to talk about this next card, Blake, because you know why. Yep. <laughs> talk about it. All right. Gigantosaurus. It's a green, 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 green creature dinosaur. It doesn't have any effects, but it doesn't need any. Because it's a 10-10 monster of a card, so it's a 5 CMC for a 10-10. That's like double its power, which already in its own is the best card. And then look at it. Look at look at how, oh my god, the art's so good. I almost thought this was made up when I first saw it, because I was like, 5 CMC for a 10-10? Oh my god. That's too good, and that's too good to get in, go into my Jolt deck, but no. I don't even care that I paid $4 for this card when it's now only valued at $2. This is the best I've card I've got given it and I lost set. $2 Hands on a card. Hands down, like, throw every... I have lost so much more money on other cards in my past life, so who fucking cares? We got Gigantosaurus. Each tooth is the length of a horse. A fucking horse, Blake. And new ones grow in every 16 days? Let's get a closer look. Vivian Reed, who was those planeswalkers that we talked about and they were trash. But Gigantosaurus, oh my god. This is the best card in the set, hands down. Here comes the money. Here comes the money. Sure. Here comes the money. Whatever you say. What do you got to say about this card? I mean... Like anything? I'm not excited about you dropping this turn five and then, like, next turn casting Jalta or something. For two mana? Yeah, I'm not excited about that. But, yeah. like, it doesn't have haste, so it's like, I don't care. <laughs> Well, it doesn't matter whether or not it has haste, because if I get this out and then I get Jolta out next turn, who cares? Now I have a 10-10 and a 12-12, and I only paid like <coughs> 7 mana total for them. Okay, show me a better board present. Okay, I will. <laughs> All right. You want to talk about the next card? Yeah, so the next one is Hungering Hydra. X and a green for a 0-0 zero, zero Hydra that says, Hungering Hydra enters the battlefield with X plus one plus one counters on it. Hungering Hydra can't be blocked by more than one creature. Whenever Hungering Hydra is dealt damage, put that many plus one plus one counters on it. Oh, that's a lot. <clears throat> Yeah. So you got anything I mean, to say okay. about this card, Blake, or am I about to? Okay, go so on like, are you gonna field? put this in Jalta? <laughs> uh, okay. Yes, I should have known. Yeah. Uh, as long okay, I like the vigor, like the last text where it's like a vigor effect. That's pretty cool. Uh, like. I'm not like I don't. I honestly don't care because this doesn't have trample. I can chump this with a one-one blue and black fairy rogue token, and that's what I really care about. <laughs> hmm. You're right, Blake. You're absolutely right. But I don't know. If we were to then go to, I don't know, our next card, which I'm about to skip a few oh, in yeah. our list of lines. But then if we go uh. to Aggressive Mammoth and we go to the three green, 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 trample, other creatures you control have trample. Uh, I think Hungering Hydra is a, such a better card at this point. Am well, I right? Am okay, I but right? yeah, yeah, you're right, but you need it's the other a card in play to do it. I don't care. Okay. So, already skipping over Hungering Hydro, which is a great card to begin with, but then if you pair it up with Aggressive Mammoth, which is a 3 green 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 trample, this creature can deal excessive combat damage to the player or planeswalker it's attacking, and then other creatures you control have trample, so all your other creatures have trample, so that just makes Hungering Hydra, Gigantosaurus, 
so many other green creatures so much better out of this set and green has honestly won me over oh my god i am so excited to build my new jolt to deck okay. after this set like uh i honestly feel like this could it's not necessarily a staple but it's borderline staple in any mono green deck because almost all mono green decks want to trample and kill you. Yeah, because it's also an 8-8. <sighs> yeah. I, like, I agree anyway. with you. It's a great card, but I'm not excited about you using it against me. <laughs> uh. I'm excited oh, about you. using it against you. <laughs> anyway, do you want to talk about oh, Ronick yes, Armasaur? Oh, so... This card costs, yeah, it's beautiful. I like the art, so it's honest. like a cute little stegosaurus. But it's a one colorless, green green dinosaur creature that uh, is a two five. So like pretty good. It's gonna stay around because it has high toughness. Whenever an opponent sa activates an ability of a creature or land that isn't a mana ability, you may draw a card. So, like. I don't know, like, I've never really seen this effect before, and the fact that it's, like, another one of those whenever such and such happens, you draw a card, it's, it's, I love it, and the fact that it's, like, a ability of a creature or a land, and the fact that this is EDH, and that's gonna be happening all the time, it's, you're gonna be drawing so much card, so many cards, it reminds me of, like, uh, I can't remember the name right now, but it's, like, a tree folk and it's like it has the same CMC and it's like whenever opponents cast like a non-creature spell you like their opponents draw a card this is even better because this is specifically only you and it's like on par and it's like ah oh, it's just such good value I love it oh yeah this I honestly do think that I've Heart said this story before, tower. I'll say it again, but Green has taken the fucking stage on this set. There is no green card that I don't think hasn't been like phenomenal. Each of these have been like big boys. Mm -hmm. Alright, guy, do you want to talk about the next card? Now that we're getting into multicolor and colorless. Uh, Amulet of Safekeeping. It's a 2 CMC artifact. Whenever you become the target of a spell or ability in opponent controls, counter that spell or ability unless it's control pays 1. And creature tokens get minus 1, minus 0. <coughs> so, this is, I think, good to, like, borderline... Uh, sorry, borderline okay to good. Um, one... To pay one extra is... I, I think the part that makes this best, I guess, is the low CMC. Paying one extra isn't always a huge deal, but since, you know, you can get this out on turn two, it makes you a pretty safe target for the rest of the game. Pretty good. And then I think the extra creature tokens get minus one, minus zero. Helps block out a lot of those annoying decks like Edgar Markov. Or, I don't know, just any deck that creates so many tokens that are just minus, uh, just one ones, like Una, I guess, yeah. too. But, yeah, so this, this is pretty good, because then none of those tokens can really do shit to you. Yeah, I, I agree with you in the sense that it, it reminds me more of a stacks card, because it says the, unless its controller pays one, but, like, that's not necessarily a bad thing. Like, Ristic Study has the exact same thing, and we all know how powerful Ristic Study is. And, like, this just seems really powerful against any, like, say, burn deck that targets you, the player, or, like, any token deck. And, I mean, it's not as... I don't know, like, it seems, like, very situational against... I'd run this card against, like those two kind of decks, but, like, I might want to play, like, something like Witchbane Orb instead, because I think it's, like, three colorless instead, and it's a little bit better than... It's only, like, it gives you basically Hexproof, and, like, I don't know. 
But I agree with you. I agree with you. Where it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. So borderline yeah. okay to good. Uh, detection tower. Blake. Okay, so detection tower is a land. It's like the only land we're going to talk about, and it's you can tap it to add a colorless mana to your mana pool, or you can pay one tap. Until end of turn, your opponents and creatures your opponents control with hexproof can be the targets of spells and abilities you control as though they didn't have hexproof. I mean, I'm excited about this card, but I'm not excited about Guy using this card against my Sigarda. Yeah, it's... I'm glad that we're getting basically another, like, Arcane Lighthouse. Yeah. I don't know if I'm actually going to run this card. I do know that it would really kind of, like, fuck you over, but... I don't know. This card, like, unless if I was playing Sigarda, I don't think this card has enough weight for me to be like, yeah. I mean, I it doesn't come this. in tapped, and it can tap for colorless. Like, there's definitely those... So, like, if the worst, it can be a colorless land. It's not that bad. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, you're right. But I'm also, I mean, there are definitely the cards that I run to spite my friends. But then there's also, like, the cards I run because I know that they're just good in general. And I don't know. I don't think this... This would definitely just be the card I run to spite you. But other than that, I'm like, eh. Okay. Talk to me in, like, a year. And then we'll see if you still feel the same way about the card. Yeah, watch, in like a year, I might be like over the moon about this card. Alright, so next card, Blake, I feel like you have a lot to say about this card, because you keep talking about Sigarda oh like God. it's your girlfriend. Uh, so, the next, we're getting now to, to the multicolored cards, and this one is Seder Enchanter, one colorless green, white, for a Seder Druid that is a 2-2, and it says, whenever you cast an enchantment spell, draw a card. <sighs> so, basically, like, <sighs> this is basically another enchant... Okay, small rant here. This is basically another enchantress. Like, it has, like, the typical text that says, whenever you cast an enchantment spell, draw a card. And there's been a couple over the years of Magic's lifespan that there's, like five of them and now this is the sixth but like uh like this just this main issue is i don't like i like this breaks the flavor because all the enchantresses have been like female figures mesa enchantress verderin enchantress argothian enchantress heck even an enchantment spell that says enchantress's presence is like a feminine figure and even the in-between which is like Eidolon of Blossoms, which is an enchantment creature, it's a spirit, and it, like, still has a feminine figure, and, like, I don't know, it, like, flavor-wise, it works, it makes sense, and this card just, like, doesn't fit that, and it bothers me, it bothers me way more than it should, because, yes, it's a druid, and all the, like, creature enchantresses are druids, but, like, they're, but it's, like, they're human druids, and this is now a satyr, and, uh... Uh, like, okay, I, I would much rather have had this be an enchantress, like a human druid creature that was one colorless, green, and white. That would have been cool, because that would have been the first enchantress that was, it, that was like, in both colors. But no, instead we get this freaking satyr that I'm just, like, so, like, I have so much, like, spite against. And it's, like, the worst part? You want to know what the worst part is? I'm still probably going to put this in Sigarda, because I want the card draw. <sighs> I mean, I, I think it's a very Oh, good it is, card but it's like it doesn't deck, match the so... flavor and it's like darn it. Come on. Come on. You were so close. You were like 90% there and then you crashed and died. We need to move on. <laughs> well, that was Shut Blake's bitchin' time. Stay tuned for next week when he does it again. 
<laughs> I mean, I don't have much to say about this card because I don't run multicolors. Just you wait. So, yeah, just I wait. Uh, Poison Tip Archer. Two black green creature elf archer. It's a 2 3. It has reach, so it can hit the flying creatures like dragons. It has death touch, so no matter how much damage it does to a creature, it kills the creature. And whenever another creature dies, each opponent loses one life. So this is a pretty good card because. Fuck dragons, you can pretty much just kill this for almost nothing. And then you, each opponent, like it's not just the opponent that lost the creature, it's every opponent would lose one life. So, yeah, pretty good. It, it basically is like another Zulaport Cutthroat or Blood Artist, but like you have to run black and green. But still, it's like, I can see this being a, like a highly abused card. And, yeah. It is kind of the best defense against flying creatures when you are trying to run something that doesn't have a lot of flying in it. So I will give yeah. it that. All right. So we have right. Meteor Golem, a 7 colorless for an artifact, artifact creature golem, that's a 3-3. Three, three. And it just says, when Meteor Golem enters the battlefield, destroy target non-land permanent and opponent controls. And, I don't know, like, this isn't the best card, but it's like, hey, it's like, this can be put in any deck. And, like, it's an ETB, so that can be abused if you put it in certain decks. And it destroys target non-land permanent. And that's pretty powerful so like i mean it's just very very generic but like i think because of that it's it's good i think the only thing that turns me off from this card is how low of yeah. a power and toughness it has if it was a little higher like yeah this would be a pretty cool card but it's only three three for a seven and destroy a target and only land permanent i don't know it could have been a little better, but I, uh, I don't think I'm going to be running this card anytime soon. You know what yeah. I'm saying? You know what I'm saying. All right. All right. So now we've hit our kind of like highlights for each color. Blake, I think we're going to now hit on the top three biggest colors of or not biggest colors biggest cards of the whole yeah. set that we're most excited for and let's start with our two honorable mentions so blake and i actually hit originally planned to do top five but then as we looked at our top five we realized two of our top fives were the same so then we kind of narrowed it down to three and What's the first honorable mention? So, the mention, first honorable Blake? mention is Aggressive Mammoth. And. Uh, yeah. hey. It's just the ability to give trample to all your other creatures is just so good. It's just, it's just such good value. It's such a good card. And the fact that it's only 6 CMC and you also get 8-8 eight, eight out of it, and it itself has trample? My god. Mm -hmm. My man. And then on a very on a very similar vein, and we the... chose for our other honorable mention to be Sarah's Guardian, which is kind of like the white counterpart. Mhm. Mm right. Like this again, I bought both of these cards already. Not too expensive, very beautiful arts and just the fact that they're able to like synergize so well with your decks i think that's what makes these cards kind of like the standouts for our honorable mentions and i think other than that though our honorable mentions are kind of the like you know they're the most uh 
I think they're probably the cards that you could best put in most decks. These other decks or colors that we have for our or, or these other cards that we're about to highlight are very like specific so to kind of what more we want so Blake I want you to hit all on right so my number, number three, three is Lathless the Dragon Queen and like as much like as much as I like don't want to like agree with guy at all it's like it's dragons are fun it's like when you think of high fantasy you think of dragons and like of all the decks that I like, if I have to lose to a deck, it, like if I lose to dragons, that's badass. Like I got slammed in the face by like a fuck ton of like badass looking things, and it's like Lathless can just like make more more dragons, and it's just uh like I just think it's fucking cool. <laughs> yeah, I I agree with Blake like. The only reason why I kind of got into magic was because I started with dragons, so the fact that this dragon is kind of... I don't think it's going to be the commander I choose for my mono-red dragon deck, but... Yeah. Still what did you good. choose, guy? Alright, for my top three, it's kind of a tie, because, but not really at the same time. But both Sarkons are at a tie for number three because pretty much the same person or same card, same character. But both of them I could easily see going into my mono red future dragon deck. And I think both of them are like a huge like advantage when it comes to red. Both of them kind of do things that red is lacking. And I think that they'll both be kind of staples dragons get the, the bronze future. medal Woo! All right. yeah yeah so my number so, my number two is the card i kind of just bitched two. about which was uh satyr enchanter like i am very reluctantly gonna put it in the deck i just uh, i just wish it wasn't uh, i just wish it was a green white enchantress but i'm still gonna put it in there I mean, it's not that expensive, it's right? Like it didn't cost cents. you that much money. Yeah. So, for what it's worth and the value that it'll give your deck, I feel like you know, you're get you're. Yeah. It's still a good card. Yeah. All right. You want me to hit on my number two, and my number two is chromium. The mutable. <laughs> ba, 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 ba. So, of all the yellow dragons, I did say that Palladia was probably my favorite art. But actually, looking at in terms of the effects to the art, like this has a better ratio of great effects, great art. So. I could I could potentially see this being a Voltron deck in my future. It's the only reason why I'm a little hesitant is just because I still got my green and red deck to build, and then the high price of the foil, which I I think maybe Blake and I haven't quickly touched on that. But if we build a commander deck, we choose that yeah. our commanders be foiled, so we tend to spend the extra money so that the yeah. commander all of my nicer. play group buys their commander and foil oh yeah which can be a blessing and a curse because sometimes you got like a two dollar commander card that's non-foil but then like an eighty dollar foil card and you're like why the fuck is there such a big price difference between these two and you just kind of want to hate yep. everyone. It's Work. worth it, though. Worth but it. Chromium is my number and two. And drum roll, please, for Blake's Psychic number one. To no one's surprise, because I am putting this in Una, EDH mill, viable, 100% confirmed. Booyah! Yeah. 
yeah, this is I I am very glad that Blake showed me this card because I didn't want to put it on my top five because I knew he'd talk about it as his number one. But I honestly do think that this would go into my at least top ten. Like if not maybe even like top seven or six. Like that's I I am really stoked for this card too. Thank you. And finally, what's your la- what's your top one guy? All right, and my number one is to no one's surprise too, but it's Gigantosaurus, the motherfucking dinosaur of the year. It's a 5 CMC 1010 E2. Is, I've already read this shit already, but this is the fucking best card. I'm gonna be playing. Here comes the money in the background. To this. To this card oh my god i'm so excited oh my god i was oh my god the foil is also only like five dollars now so i may and you know what you know what screw it we're tonight i'm making the purchase for the five dollar version even though i've already bought the foil this card is so awesome oh my god i'm so excited for this card like oh my god just look at it just look at it oh my god like dinosaurs i can love dinosaurs dinosaurs are what got me into it like art dinosaurs are what got me into like everything pokemon Yu-Gi-Oh. so without dinosaurs i don't know i i don't know where i'd be today i'd probably be living in a box homeless in a garbage can or something but dinosaurs are what got me to the man i am today oh my god this is so fucking great okay that's all I have that's to say only about that, this card. that's all you have to say about the card <sighs> that's all i have to say about this card uh, I'm gonna be so happy when this card comes in the mail. All right, I think you know Blake and I. Before we talk about our podcast, we always are like, "Yeah, let's shoot for this time." <laughs> and we were like, "Okay, let's aim for you know an hour, maybe an hour fifteen, because we got a ton of cards to hit on." We're now at an hour 46, <laughs> almost 47 now, and I think it's pretty much time for us to stop. So I would like to give a huge shout out to our sponsors. <laughs> and thank you so much for all your support. Uh, Blake, I think this is just a touch, testament words? to how much of nerds we are. But with the fact that we like planned to only talk for one hour and talked for freaking two. And honestly, I feel like we could talk even more about this, but... We gotta end this crap. <laughs> yeah. I, I definitely think there's probably a few... Like, we could definitely have gotten into nitty-gritty about, like, why yeah. we made some of the cards that we didn't touch on. And... But you don't want to hear that. You probably don't even want to hear how much we've already talked. So, you know, let's just... Yeah. Let's just end on a good note. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you very much. We will plan to definitely do our next podcast in another two weeks. And we will you. see you then. Uh, all right. Thank you. And good night. One second.